Your hair is looking great. Yes, man. Lady? Sir? I default to man all the time. I don't know if that's problematic for people. Um, it's not but, for me, but I don't have any interesting gender things going on. Okay. You know, if I was more in it, if I had more interesting gender feelings, then maybe I would care. I do. I have defaulted to uh, brides people and grooms people for like communications. Yes. And emails. And I think that's, that's better. I've noticed people who are just like, some planners are like, groomsmen, brides. And I, I'll say the opposite. I'll say yeah. the d- gender neutral term. And then they'll change their tune. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Like, let's just jump on board of some, definitely in professional settings. Like, you know me. You know yes. I don't mind you calling me dude or man. I, I appreciate it. But that. when we're in an email scenario and... You know what's actually really interesting? Having a husband whose name is Taylor. Yeah. Right. And I often, I mean, for years, I called Taylor my partner mm-hmm. because boyfriend felt really like juvenile when mm-hmm. you're like grown adults. Um, and so I think there were probably a lot of people that thought that we were gay. And I think that that's just honestly so much more interesting. Yeah. I wish Kelly I was. could be Kelly could also be uh, a man's name. Whenever we order Starbucks, she, she'll pay. Uh, every now and then, and Taylor then like, and Lindsay could Kelly. be yeah. Taylor yeah. and Lindsay could be two men. Totally, totally. Could be two women. Huh. I don't know. We could have more interesting lives, but unfortunately, we don't. We are not cool and <laughs> queer. Oh my gosh! Actually, one of our first one of our first questions today is from a cool and queer person yeah, that we love. Jennifer, that's amazing. <laughs> Speaking so- of interesting, less boring people than us. <laughs> um, if you're new to the podcast, my name is Tim. This is Lindsay. We are both wedding and portrait photographers. We take your calls. We take your DMs. We answer them live to tape here on the podcast. We're recording. We're recording. This is great. That's always good. That's it's always, always nice. nice to check. Tim um, and I kind of just slam cut into this one here. You didn't do the intro, though. Sing us a song. <clears throat> me, me, me. Me, 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 me. Uh, oh, sounded delightful. Po- podcast. Um, the warm up. Oh my so god! So we're gonna get to the first, first question. Of all, <laughs> in my Britney Spears, my Britney Spears monitor, yes. that sounded delightful. Really? Oh, good. Okay, it sounded really awful d- in my ears. So. Oh no, it sounded really nice. Didn't it sound nice, everyone? I hope you guys. Think everyone, so. aren't we loving how Tim sounds today? We're just so happy about it. Turn my phone on. Do not disturb. Let's get to the first question. This is from Jennifer. I would love to. Um, our hashtag hashtag her handle is queer photo and her question is do you feel like there are fewer bookings this year this year being 2024 or have people gotten worse at marketing slay yeah so right for the throat right on in there jennifer first of all we love jennifer yes. um jennifer has been in our circles for it feels like years now big tegan and sarah fan oh yeah I really wish that I could have gone to the Tegan and it Sarah show last week, but yeah. I had Bell's palsy. That's listen. Some some weeks are better than others. And Actually, last week was... honestly, uh, you know what's so funny? Um, I last week, and I don't know if anybody that was watching the video noticed. We, so we recorded one week ago today, and during our recording, I realized that I was developing Bell's palsy. Yeah, I looked at the footage. I didn't see any this side evidence. of my face. Thankfully, was like away from the camera. Yeah, but like was just slowly freezing. Um, so, anyways, Jen was like, "Do you want to come to see Tegan and Sarah?" And I said, <laughs> <laughs> "I'll be busy." Maybe not. Yeah. Um, but let's get back to this question, yes. um, Tim. How do you feel? Uh, are first of all, are you feeling like there are fewer bookings this year for you? Interesting question because I shoot photo and video mm-hmm. and I would say 40% of my year is made up with photography clients for weddings and then the 60% is video. So it's kind of an even split, not quite. Yeah. Um, and video is one of those things that couples have budget for later. It's interesting to me that it's, it's, it's slowly changing a bit more as time goes, has gone on since I've started shooting in 2015. Um, but the, uh, the idea is that most couples have budget for video as kind of an afterthought once they booked all the other videos. The order of operations. So I tend to book wedding video clients about, I would say, six to eight months from their date, um, often within the same year. And that's that's pretty common still to this day. So my calendar kind of is still nice. filling up. I kind of love kind of that, yeah, honestly. It nice. It's like, a nice surprise. It's a, bit, it's a bit nerve-wracking sometimes to be like, am I good? Am I going to make enough money this year the and number doesn't feel confident like yeah. a year out you're not like oh i know that i'm set for next year and yeah. you can make your decisions based on that but like wedding photography is really a unique business there's not very many other businesses that people know how much money they're making a year from now mm-hmm. no it's it's very interesting it's it's um so yeah th- to answer your question 
uh, and this question from Jennifer. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I would say that it's pretty much on par. I've noticed a bit of a dip, and just talking from other two other wedding vendors, other wedding photographers, they're all saying kind of the same thing that there's this mm-hmm. kind of pause, global pause, global lull in terms of bookings that are happening. Have you noticed a difference from this year to last? So I have, but I also think that there's too many factors for me to say okay. it's from one year to the next. Right. Because thank goodness, I would say a few years ago, I actually started tracking um, the number of bookings that I get on a spreadsheet. It's not a fancy CRM. It's not like there's no graphs. Yeah. It's literally, a, it's the world's most unhinged <laughs> spreadsheet. Okay. And I track the number of weddings that I have, the number of sessions that I have, two right. different sheets how much each of those is bringing in mm-hmm. um the the date that they booked as well as like when they inquired okay so sort of the a bit of a lead time on it um one thing that i noticed for sure is is that the i'm taking less bookings but in 2020 and i think we've talked about this i i was shooting i was supposed to shoot about 50 weddings that year and then not that didn't happen. Yeah. And I loved the year that I had so much. I spent time at the cottage with my family. I, you know, we took the Jeep out to a river and just like chilled by a river one yeah, day. Like nice. things that just wouldn't happen on nice weather days any other time of year because I was shooting 50 freaking weddings a year. Um, and then things came to a grinding halt and I was like, okay, well, how do I keep up this same number of weddings but not have to lose too much um, right. in income. So I increased the number of family shoots I was doing, increased the number of branding sessions I did. So my my business has evolved and yeah. it's changed in the last year. So it's really hard for me to be like, you know, from 2018 to 2019, it would have been so simple for me to say if there were more or less bookings because mm. my business model was the same. But my business model has changed as I think a lot of ours have. Yeah. So it's really hard for me to, when I hear people saying like, we're all getting fewer bookings. I'm like, yeah, but did you go from 3,500 to 4,500 in the last year? Right. Because yes, you've now narrowed down your market more, right? Like I went from like a 3,000-ish range to a 4,500, then from 4,500 to like, you know, six grand. Like the, we're talking about different weddings now. Yeah. There are just not that many couples Absolutely. that are booking in those ranges. Mm-hmm. So... I would say I had this I had this fear, this like, oh my gosh, there's way less bookings. I had this last year. Okay. So I'm feeling like, oh, you guys all need to calm down. This is gonna be fine. Because <laughs> I've already had this meltdown of yeah. like, oh, right. I only have 30 weddings booked for this year. And you know who actually was my therapist that was okay. like, um, so just let's, fo- oh, sorry, everybody. Okay, fine. Um, she was like, I just want to, <laughs> I just want to go back to about a year ago. She flips through her notes and she's like, so one year ago, you told me that you were going to intentionally t- take less weddings <laughs> yep. in order to have more free time. And now you're telling me you're freaked out that you have free time and less weddings. Well, if these aren't you tell on yourself Lindsay if these are the bit. consequences of the actions that you <laughs> literally worked for and asked for yeah. so I think it becomes scarier yeah. when it's not intentional yeah. yeah right like that's a really scary thing when you made no changes you really were just going off of what you did last year you felt like you had a lot of really good relationships with vendors and venues and you thought that you could just coast on through yeah but then what happened a younger generation came in. They started getting a little bit better. They had the time during COVID to learn how to take photos of families, friends, things like that. They, they started built building their portfolio. Yeah. They spent more time on the internet than you. Yep. They maybe don't have kids. Mm-hmm. They have figured out strategies that work better. And now they're coming in and they're eating your lunch. Like we did. Mm-hmm. Like every single generation <laughs> has to somebody older than them, right? That's how it works, man. The the young eat the old. That's yes. how that works. But and also every single year, <laughs> every single year since I have started in this industry, yeah. the older generation says, oh, there's so few bookings this year. Mm. To which I have always said, are there or are you just seeing less bookings because you are trying less hard? And yeah. it's actually really interesting. I had a really lovely conversation with one of the florists that this we Tim and I were at a vendor open house on the weekend mm-hmm. for um, uh, Pearl Weddings, which is one of the like largest wedding venue groups in our area. Mm-hmm. And one of the florists, um, who's a, like a great friend of ours, came up to me and she was like, are you feeling like things are different? And I was like, definitely. Like like across the board. Yeah, sure. There there are, I would say, less inquiries mm-hmm. um, at this moment for everyone. Yeah. 
maybe it's because there's more of us florists, photographers, everybody sure. wants to be a self. We, we told everybody how good it was to be self-employed and yeah. they believed us. Yeah, they, they, we should they, have kept it to we, ourselves. We, we fucked up. We fucked up. So she was saying, <laughs> what do you think? And it's so funny because how often do I say, oh, we just have to try a little harder again? Often. Well, once a week. Lindsay and I will once a week look at each other and be like, man, no emails. No, no we new emails. And we try. And then the next day, <laughs> that trying pays off. And we're like, oh, we should well, just we try should all try. the time. So back to this question. It's it's a little bit of column A, column B. I will also say, um, uh, I saw this. <laughs> I did some research. Brr, not real research. Did you uh, really? Oh my I, gosh, I'm Tim, TikTok, you're so prepared. Non-stop. No, oh, no, no. Okay. This is TikTok research. Uh, Take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> um, and this is something I confirmed with Jeff Mack as well, who uh, also did research. So mm. we'll see how real you guys this are is. All on the you're welcome to Google this and figure this out. There's probably a study. I haven't done much more research than what I'm about to tell you now. So okay. Let's hear it. there is um, a direct correlation to people dating during COVID. Um, and the the treadmill we've talked about this before of life where you meet you date you meet parents you go through a rough patch you know you you you, uh, you commit yourself to each other you get engaged and you get married we're on the part of the treadmill of life where couples who would have met in 2020 and 2021 during the pandemic did not meet and so there's fewer people getting married now right this year because of the treadmill came off the tracks i mean I've and that's heard a this theory th- i've heard this heard theory this. also okay. the engagement you know theory yeah. of, of how long it takes for people on average to date meet whatever my only concern with said theory okay. it's the same one that i have with every theory for every reason why people always say oh bookings are down sure Okay, so we live in an area where they decided to put the LRT in, light Mm. rail transit. Mm -hmm. And it decimated a lot of businesses, like very genuinely decimated a lot of businesses. Because because they ripped up our entire main street. So all of these small businesses that relied on walking foot traffic didn't have it. The businesses that are still here evolved. They figured it out. They did something different during that time. They pivoted. They've been here for 30 years. What's an LRT? You know what I mean? What is an LRT? Truly. There are business <laughs> there are businesses that stuck around through that and then the ones that didn't that they were like, "Well, due to the LRT." Same ones that said due to the pandemic. Yeah. Same ones that will say due to the 2020 people not getting engaged. That's why I'm saying it's it's a totally like theoretical and conspiracy kind of thing yeah. because you could draw a red line with with thread to anything and map it and make it make sense you know due I mean? to the economy is going to be the next sure. big one for sure yeah. people are going to say so so let's talk about the economy let's talk about the economy let's talk about the economy i not um, economists by the way oh, not we are so oh. unqualified to have this conversation <laughs> i listen to a lot of podcasts i think okay. those are a little bit closer yeah. and like audiobooks and stuff i Good. think those are a little bit closer to actual research than ticky talky but let's hope what do i know um it depends on who you're watching on tiktok true um, and one thing that's always happened whenever there has been an economic recession or conversations of an economic recession okay. is that people create a recession because right. they hear rumblings of a recession and then they start, then they stop spending back. because yeah. they're all afraid, yeah. right? Yeah. Fear. Sure. As a whole, my clients have not lost their jobs. I don't hear from many people that are booking weddings with me saying, oh, I lost my job due to a recession. Yeah. You know, we live in a tech community Mm -hmm. and still these people if they've lost their jobs they're finding them somewhere else they're picking them up somewhere else it's Mm -hmm. not like it's not like we're seeing um unemployment levels at an unreasonable number right now sure there's no factory well there is a factory in town it's across from my house but there's no like main factory in the city that employs 90 percent of the people there's No. no coal coal mine there's no logging situation it's like tech you can work remotely yeah you have a computer, you have a job, basically. You're probably... That's oversimplified. Not to, that's, well, I'm sorry if you're listening. No, but like, as a generalization, yeah. as a general... This is what we can Insurance only companies, in. there's three major ones in town, I think. Yeah. There's two ma- massive hospitals. There's jobs. The thing is, I think that we are seeing is that, you know, people obviously have higher standards for what mm. they want to do for work, which is lovely. Amazing. But they if should. you are planning a seventy or $80,000 wedding, you probably are not in a position to be getting picky um, if you lose your job, you're just going to go and get, get another one. So right. with that being said, um, if people are pulling back right now, mm. it's not because the money 
isn't there and they don't have it, it's because they are afraid of what might happen if things, and I've been even doing it myself. I've noticed it in my own behaviors. I'm still making the same, if not more money than in the past few years. Yeah. But because people keep talking about a recession and they keep talking about inflation and they keep talking about interest rates. And it's not to say like we live in a very, very privileged and blessed bubble of how much money we make, that the cost of groceries going up 30%, it really hasn't, thank God, it has not impacted me a whole lot. I'm mm. annoyed by it. I'm annoyed by it too, yeah. Like, I'm I'm certainly annoyed by it, and I'm like cursing Galen Weston on the daily. Yeah. Not for my own benefit, I am cursing Galen Weston because I think that he's like the devil incarnate. Yeah. Because there are people who will lose their homes, they will lose their livelihoods. Every single you know, percentage that inflation rises for people. I assume that there is, and I don't know, like this is not a thing I have researched. This is no Again, not economists. But I assume that there is a direct correlation yeah. to people's mental health and to lives being lost yeah. and stress and all of that because of greed, corporate greed. Mm -hmm. Because they, they've now gone, for those of you who aren't in our area, um, Galen Weston is like- The devil. Is the devil. He basically- it owns the monopoly on grocery prices in our area, which yeah. is also probably should be illegal. Um, but in Canada, across the board, we have only a couple of different grocery stores. And this man is like currently, I think, in front of judges trying to tell people like it's reasonable that he gave himself a multi-million dollar raise during COVID. After doing a price fixing on bread uh, yeah. during the uh, the early aughts. Yeah, they were like, we'll give wild. you a price fix on bread. And it was like higher. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. We are in a lucky position that True. that you know the cost of groceries going up hasn't really changed like my spending habits, but mentally it has. Yes. Mentally, I'm like, oh well, I keep on hearing about this, so should we tighten the purse strings up a little bit? Mm. So when it comes to business, if I'm noticing this in my own behavior, then it comes down to like, what do we do to change this? Like, have you have you Tim have you done anything to adjust your practices over the last little bit to sort of, I don't know, either attract more clients mm. because you're feeling like they're more hesitant to spend or are you still like, I'm good, you know, six to eight months out is a comfy amount of time for me to get bookings. I'm not worried. Um, or are you, are you noticing like things are getting weird with the economy? Things are getting weird with this wedding industry. Should right. I, should I evolve? Yeah, like, I think, or do you have to? I mean, I've done a lot more commercial work. Thankfully, I have that kind of um, that muscle. I guess I can always flex and, and work and work on um, when it comes to making money. Um, for the last couple of years, I've kind of been practicing for this kind of recession that we're all going through by producing podcasts. Uh, this one as well, uh, which is a new one, which is great. I'm happy to be here doing it uh, like on mic. But I, I produce podcasts around town for other companies and clients who want. Um, audio marketing that's kind of long form and and I do I still do commercial work that includes like um, new builds uh, photography of like real estate so I'm, I've mm -hmm. always been diversifying that's kind of the name of what I do even in the wedding business I diversify by doing photo and video yes um, it's a so built-in diversification I just feel like I've been planning and practicing for this my whole life in terms of you know reacting to traumatic events the first of which being um watching the two towers come down uh september 11th on tv live and then we went through uh, uh a war again we're not from the states but we we're the adjacent. whole world has gone through these things we went through a war that was unjust we went through weapons of mass destruction mm -hmm. we did um um we saw a recession uh from the global uh perspective when housing market crashed yeah so we've been kind of through the ringer as a yeah. people yeah. Historically speaking, there's been a lot more atrocities in the world, and I don't want to get biblical and <laughs> historical here, but I just feel like if you can't adapt and you can't just be maybe like half a step ahead and just kind of plan for what the economy and what the world throws at you in terms of what potentially could down, come down the pike, you you will die and you will start to complain about things, and you'll get to a point in your career where you start to hate the job and resent the people who are your clients. And I don't ever want to be that person. So even when things get bad, I look at myself historically and say, you know what? It's not that bad. I've, I've probably been in worse and I'll probably be in worse. This right now, this moment feels great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a Buddha. I'm not an economist. Um, I'm not any of those things. Jennifer, I hope we answered some of your questions or at least gave you some food for thought. 
um, we're really good at our jobs and we're really good at advice. So Basically, we're really, really good at our jobs, Jen. <laughs> so um, if you're feeling like you're getting fewer bookings, well, suck it up, Buttercup. No, just... <laughs> no, and honestly... I don't want to come at it feeling like we're not being to be empathetic. Said, no, and totally. We, we totally understand. We've seen it. Um, we've heard it from people we know and love and uh, you yourself included. We understand that it's mm-hmm. a weird kind of pause happening right now and not, I'm not sure if that's just new generation of people getting married, a new generation of vendors in this space. But we have noticed that there is a direct correlation historically to us trying a little bit harder equals mm-hmm. inquiries. So I think it is interesting also to look at things really like I, I do love data. I'm a mm. very like analytical person mm-hmm. and um, as creative and creatives and business owners that can sometimes come at odds because a lot of the time we think of things really emotionally. Well, this feels like a slower year or this feels different. That's a great point. Maybe look at it and see if it is Yeah. because just like Karen, God bless her said to me, yes, my therapist, is this not exactly what you had asked for? And then I went and looked at my cutesy little spreadsheet and I was like, (laughs) Oh, dollar for dollar, I'm making more money. Yeah. And now, which means I have more time off, which can feel scary. And if I had reacted to that and made decisions based on that, I would not be leading the business that I wanted. I would be leading the business that fear told me to run. Mm -hmm. So I think when it comes down to this question of are there fewer bookings, what we really need to do is like most things, tune out the noise of what the industry is telling you tune out the noise of what tiktok and instagram and all your fellow photographers who are in completely different markets and all of this are telling you yeah and look at yourself and say am i doing the work that i want to be doing right am i trying as hard as i was when i was at my peak when i was thriving what was different for me then and if it's quantifiable, you can literally say, well, I was putting out X number of posts per week. I was blogging. I was um, engaging more in the market. Um, the the florist that I was speaking to yeah. on the weekend, um, she, she said, you know, I think it's just that like, my machine was working really well for a few years. Mm. And she was like, I I guess it's just time for me to try hard again. And it made me laugh because I was like, oh, that's what we say all the time. Well, we'll just try try harder harder again. Just try harder. Because it it is really easy when your marketing machine is automated for a really long time. Yeah. You keep getting referrals, blah, blah, blah. Like it's really working well for you. You get in a groove. It's easy to rest on your laurels. Yeah. So maybe it's time for us to just try a little harder and see what works. And that will be... A, stent, a steady and a constant that will work out well for you in every single area of your life and business. One last thing I'll say is that companies, massive companies that exist in the world and have for hundreds, hundreds of years, uh, decades, one of which is Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is one of the biggest corporations in the world. Does Coca-Cola need to necessarily advertise ever again? No, they don't, but they want to be top of mind. They always want to be the thing that you think of when you go to a movie theater. Oh, let's get a thing of Coke. Oh, they sell Coke here at this this you know, restaurant. Is it Pepsi or Coke? They're always going to put their name out there in advertisements where they associate themselves with love, friendship, bubbles of happiness, whatever it may be. They never need to advertise again, but they do because they want to be top of mind. And I think that's what we all need to do as individual businesses, marketers, creatives. Just keep putting yourself out there and let people know you exist. They only don't need to because they do though. If they stopped, could Pepsi not come in and eat their lunch? I don't. I don't know. I think they're too big. They own too many things. They're they're a massive corporation that owns. They do have a lot so of so much. They do obviously they do, but yeah. eventually, if Pepsi became cool, yeah, then they come in and they're like, now we have market share. Like now we have like remember the Pepsi challenge? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Gosh. Coke got scared during the Pepsi challenge mm-hmm. because Pepsi all of a sudden became cool, which Pepsi hadn't been cool for ever. I don't. Do you think, think if they don't advertise, no one's going to order Coke again? No, I think eventually they'll lose market share, okay. which then will eventually mean that all of the, you know, if they've got a Disney contract, mm. Disney's going to be like, well, people do prefer Pepsi do now. They know? No, but I'm saying, what okay. if they did? What if they right. did? Right, sure. People, I don't think, like, I love a Diet Coke. Sure. I could switch to Diet Pepsi. Could you? If it was more readily available. I, yeah, I'm not like, mm. I'm not like. You a, got one of these? I'm not an addict. <laughs> uh, we're getting off the, the rails here. Uh, Jennifer, thank you so much for your call. Question. DM. If anyone out there has a DM, uh, a question, uh, a thought, concern, a hot take you want us to react to, you oh, can reach out to us it. on the Shoot the Shot podcast. Shoot. Nope. At, at the, the. Wow. The Shoot Your Shot podcast. We did it one day. On Instagram. Yeah. 
And um, it's Tim and I that manage that thing. There's nobody else in there. So if you want to send us an anonymous message, question, thought, concern. Speaking of anonymous, we've got a really good one right here coming we should take, up. We should take a break first, pay some bills. Oh, you're right. Okay, okay, right after this, we've got a juicy anonymous question coming for you. Lindsay, I've noticed something really interesting about your Instagram posts lately. Oh, have you, Tim? I feel like you're trying harder. Oh my gosh. My secret, and it's not so secret, is social templates. Everyone who is a photographer knows how painful it is to make reels. Mm -hmm. Remember you used to be able to just like take photos and mm -hmm. then put them on Instagram and people would see them? No longer. Now you must make a reel. Now in order for people to see said photos, they must be in video form. Even if you're a photographer, you need to focus on video. And what is one of the ways you do that, Lindsay? Social templates. So social templates is this incredible platform. You know when you're on Instagram and you go to somebody's Instagram and you're like, oh, I really love that reel. I'll show you one that I made. And you're thinking to yourself, wow, that's beautiful. beautiful. It's synced to the beat. It's using a trending audio. I wish that I could make something like that. Well, now you can. So when you are a subscriber of Social Templates, you will get access to this private Social Templates account. You will then have access to brand new trending reels. Every single week they put new ones out. You'll see how many, this one says 11 segments. So that can be photo, video, if you have BTS, if you have actual stills that you've already edited and delivered. It's really so simple. You'll hit this use template button and then you just plunk them in. Whoa. And they are already time synced. Amazing. So they're beat matched, they're time synced, and because the audio is trending and because it's current, it's going to put it into people's feeds, which is the goal. Amazing. So it looks like I'm trying hard, but actually I'm trying not at all. Socialtemplates.co is where you're going to go to sign up. It's $29 a month, which is basically nothing when you compare it to the cost of having like a marketing assistant or even just your own time spent in CapCut or whatever many apps. You use my code Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-A-Y, and you will get the first month free. And I strongly recommend it. You're going to try it for the first month and you're gonna be like i'm in so give it a shot social templates.co the promo code Lindsay. promo code Lindsay. social templates.co back to the show and hey, we're back thank you so much uh for sticking around that was a great ad thank you so much we love ads <laughs> here we are we are back for part two of the yes. shoot your shot podcast we're gonna get right into question number two question two is coming to us from anonymous so here it is I hired a second and their raw files were all over the place. It seemed like they were shooting on auto or one of the priority modes and I'm having to put in a ton of work to make them usable. You wouldn't know this from their portfolio, which is why I hired them. As a fellow photographer, I know how easily fixable it is on their end. Would you tell the person? If, if it was me, I'd want to know in case I had accidentally changed a setting or even just as a learning experience. But how do you have that conversation without it coming across the wrong way, Tim. Great question. Uh, thank you, Anonymous. As always, you can submit your questions and let us know if you want to be anonymous and we'll keep your uh, your name and face out of everything because, you know, you have a business. You don't want to dox yourself for asking a potentially inappropriate question. And this is not inappropriate. This is um, a very learning experience kind of situation. Mm -hmm. For the, all of us. For all of us. Um, I would say as a person who also second photographs uh, often for you, for Taylor, mm -hmm. for other photographers. Um, I still like to do it just because it helps me flex that muscle. It helps me, you know, make decisions I wouldn't make on a wedding day had it had I been like, you know, hired to do that myself. Mm -hmm. I'm able to kind of play, which is a great experience. Yeah. If you're hired as a second photographer and you're uh, and you're hired to do a job like getting ready of another member of the wedding party, you want to take that a bit more seriously. How do you bring it up in a conversation with someone who has done maybe less than you expected them to do? I think it's a phone so call. Scary. Yeah. It's scary. It's scary because we're all small business owners. We're all people who, you know, we've decided to do this creative, incredible thing. And it's very important. And to have an employee for the first time, maybe uh, having a difficult, difficult conversation is just that it's difficult. So I would say a phone call is the best or maybe meet in person, bring your mm -hmm. laptops together. Email is the wrong format for this kind of conversation, I think. A lot of things can be misconstrued mm -hmm. when you're chatting um, about things that people have done that you don't necessarily agree with. Mm -hmm. So I think a phone call or in person, F2F, face to face is the way to go. Um, in terms of vetting people, I mean, there's, there's nothing you could do at this point. I, I would, it's happened, right? They've taken photos that are less than what they have shown in their portfolio and that sucks. Um, 
it's something you mentioned anonymous that you can easily fix and post um but it's something that maybe they're not aware of or maybe they're purporting to be something more in terms of their skill level than they actually are yeah that's a <laughs> i feel like i'm talking in circles here but i feel no, like I, it's difficult it's really is a difficult thing to without knowing more specifics like if they're all over the place, my my thinking is that your assumption is right, that they were shooting on Aperture Priority yeah. or something, right? Yeah. Like, especially if their portfolio is really good. Yeah. Presumably their portfolio was images that, you know, they're proud of, yeah. right? They're yeah. not showing you their worst. This actually reminds me a lot of the question, you know, um, photographers talk about this all the time. Like, would you ever share the raws? Mm. And I always say... Well, I would, but I know how to shoot it right in camera. <laughs> yeah, I get it mostly right in camera, so Most, not a problem. I'm not I'm not terrified of people seeing it yeah. early days. I wouldn't have shown my clients the raws because I didn't want Absolutely them to know not. how all over the place things are. I would were. be like, oh, yeah, I'm shooting for the highlights and then show them an underexposed photo. Like, okay, cool. Okay, I don't I'm really like, understand. Well, I'm not doing that again. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, it is scary. And I have hired second photographers of all varying skill levels. We've talked about that in another episode, you know. And... Um, if people are human, sometimes we have an off day, even this many years in, I'll be like, what was I thinking? What was my shutter speed so slow for some reason? Yeah. That was so silly. Like what a mistake. Um, as, as a person who's managed people, I think that there's a couple of, of questions. One, are you interested in hiring this person? Like, yeah. did they bring value to the table that wasn't just photography? Like, were they helpful? Right. Were they um, great to work with? Did they have nice communication skills? Did they dress nicely? Did they play did a part? Did the couple like them? Yes. Did yeah. they play a role in the day that was positive? And if right. that's the case, then by all means, it's worth having this conversation with them if you think that there is something that could be, like you said, easily fixable in just maybe them learning their settings a bit more, shooting on manual. If they were shooting on manual, maybe they need to have a conversation about like, listen, we all for the most part, unless you went to school, are self-taught. So yeah. it's it's very possible that they aren't aware that they shouldn't be having their shutter speed below, you know, the focal 60. length or something yeah, like that on their be. lens, yeah. right? So if no one's ever told them that, if they're second shooting, it's, it's possible it's because they aren't there yet. They're not yeah. at this position yet. So maybe it is a really educational moment. But the first question you have to ask yourself is, do I want to work with this person again? Because it's one of those things that I've always taught. I was always taught when working in business when I st first started working for jobs is you can teach someone a skill. You can teach them yeah. how to push a button how to run a factory basically but you what you can't teach and is more difficult to teach is social emotional skills like empathy like showing up on time yeah like just being caring. a good person and caring and that's one of those things that if they have in their core like Lindsay said it's something that you probably want to keep them around in because you yeah. can teach them how to use a camera I, i've taught many that's people no how to use a camera it's no not brainer. difficult we're it's not buttons, that smart it's lenses it's a couple of dials if it's in focus looks good you're probably fine. Take the photo. Yeah. Um, especially nowadays with technology being, you know, with mirrorless in the last five, so five six years. So that was my other thinking okay. is that cameras are almost too easy that people yeah. haven't had to learn these things. Like True. when DSLRs, like when that's what we were using, there was not like a, obviously aperture priority. Yeah. That's how most of us got started, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, aperture priority really works well until you have a person standing backlit. And you have to use your brain instead of letting the camera use its brain. Yeah, it's not AI. No, it is. It is using an equation of bright, light source, dark. This, I guess, we try to figure out somewhere in between there. Right. right. It's not looking at a photo of a person and being like, you know, it's not your iPhone skin it's, tone it's adjustments. It's not making a good. Yes. It's not making a good choice. It's not using computational it's photography. It's it's using still the the basics of like what was brought over from film to digital it's still using somewhat of that technology it's not using computational but now cameras are too good a little bit and these newer photographers have not necessarily learned those skills just like the film photographer said that shit about us though so sure i'm not saying like oh these young <laughs> kids don't have it hard enough screw that absolutely not maybe they don't have it that hard and i love that for them yeah but with that being said, we should still educate them on, you know, the importance of some specifics of, you know, I want to make sure that you understand your shutter speed shouldn't be that low anymore. That's just like, obviously, you know, a one off, but, yeah. um, it probably comes down to some training. Yeah. One thing I will say is having been the person who has called through a gallery tired and been like, what the is this yeah. like just mad upset and reading this, honestly, anonymous, I can tell you're a little bit 
I'm mad still. Yeah. Like I wouldn't, you don't sound like angry. Like you don't sound like a lunatic or anything, but <laughs> <laughs> definitely. And I can, I can feel the anger cause I've been there mm-hmm. where I'm literally calling through and I'm like, what did you do? Why did because you make these choices? Because you're fearful now of the repercussions. If it is not a solvable thing, mm-hmm. if they maybe lost moments that they shouldn't have lost, if, if they overinflated their um, skill set yes. when they were speaking to you. They showed you a portfolio that you thought was was great. Amazing. And it was based on um, maybe thousands and thousands of called out photos yeah. that, that maybe weren't awesome. So I would say the first thing is like, you know, determine whether or not you actually care about working them. And if you do, calm down first. Yeah. Calm down and be like, okay, this is a learning experience. If I do want to keep this relationship with them, yeah, of course, I'm going to tell that person because if I want to keep you as a second, like Tim, if if you screwed up, you know, the first three weddings that we shot together and I thought to myself, well, I really like this guy and I hope he figures it out. Mm. The resentment that would have crept in over me not telling you and you continuing to make those mistakes wouldn't have allowed us to have a friendship yeah. and wouldn't have allowed us to have a working relationship because I'd just be resenting you not reading my mind. Yeah. And there's, there's instances where that's happened between us where Lindsay would say like, okay, so this isn't necessarily a problem, but like when you do getting ready for the guys, can you shoot full head to toe portrait style? Because sure. people are wanting to post those things on Instagram. Yeah. And that's something I was not thinking about at the time at yeah. all, but because Just you were specifics. thinking specifics, cause you know what people want, you know what your yeah. clients are looking for. So if you can, you see one or two weddings, you're like, Oh, I want more of that. Like I only got mm-hmm. one or two frames. Like let's do five or 10, mm-hmm. you know, let's do some yes. more, Buddy shots, out. whether full head to toe, portrait yeah. style as opposed to landscape. Yeah, for sure. And and it, 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 again, you're dealing with an artistic person yeah. that is making their own artistic decisions. Mm-hmm. The Some of the best seconds I've had are people that were not photographers before because um, yes. I trained them yes. from day one. As Katie. My, right? Katie's like, an amazing photographer. Yeah, he's so talented. Yeah. Leslie's really great. Like yep. friends of mine that are artistic and have a really strong eye, but weren't photographers before um, because I trained them on the Lindsay Coulter way of doing things yes. instead of the how to shoot a wedding. Like you are a fantastic photographer, but you shoot less like Lindsay Coulter would, which oh, is absolutely. great. Like yeah. it's great. It, it is great. But <laughs> when I need like a, I need a to know that this is exactly the box that this is going to fit yes. in. Yes. I would say those are the mornings when I have more conversations with you. Like, okay, you have to do a flat lay today. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Love a flat like lay. specifics. I'm yep. like, I know this client. I know exactly what they're looking for. They're dialed right into my style. So I need you to shoot it exactly how, you know. I think Lindsay Coulter would shoot this. Yes. And back to what I said at the beginning of this this kind of chat, this uh, this question. Um, it's it's about having conversations, as you said, but also letting them know how much they're willing or you're willing to let them experiment on the day. Like I mm-hmm. mentioned, I like to experiment on wedding days when I'm doing a second shoot for yourself or for, or for Taylor, um, where I kind of get to play a bit more. Cause noodle. It's, it's a, you get to noodle around. You get to mm-hmm. try and experiment with some new things. But I only do that once I know that I have the shots I need. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's about understanding that part of the day um and relaying that to the second photographer so they know like hey how are how high are the stakes how high are the stakes and also dance floor time maybe you go nuts maybe Mm -hmm. you get to play around maybe there's portions during the ceremony where you as the primary photographer are getting the a-reel shots and they're welcome to just kind of get the gravy and the b-roll stuff yeah um but it's about communication communication is hard which is why we have a podcast to help us (laughs) uh help you communicate better with your clients and uh be a better person 90 percent of this all comes down to is just like how, honestly, having hard conversations is such a good skill set. It mm-hmm. really is. Yeah. You'll get better at everything in life when you can learn how to have a hard conversation. So here's how I would go about this. I would send them a message. Okay. Hey, um, thank you so much. Like we got some really beautiful shots at this last wedding. Loved Maybe it. even send them a couple of your faves, of your faves. Yep. like loved these. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a couple of wedding dates coming up that I'd love to chat with you about and see if you're available, if that's what you want, obviously. Um, and say, but I just want to go over a couple of things. So they know like, yeah, okay, there's a conversation to be had here, but sure. like, I'm not being fired. You yes. know, I'm not being, I'm not being rolled over the coals here. She's not mad, mad. Um, 
we're just trying to have a, have a conversation. So they're not coming in defensive. It's just as important to help them let their guard down yeah. as it is for you to come in level-headed. If you come in hot, and I've done this before, and I'm same. not proud of that, where same, I'm same, like, same. what the fuck were you thinking? You ruined this day for me. Yeah. I This could have been so good. And some of it probably is my own fault that I didn't give enough direction or whatever, right? And yep. I threw you in and I was like, have fun. And then not you, Tim, just in no, general. No, no, I understand. But where you come in too hot and you're like, wow, this really is not awesome. This yeah. is really not ideal. And those are not productive conversations. They're not They're, good. Not, they're not productive. So learn from fingers, our, it's yeah, just learn not from fun our mistakes. Yeah. And and let people know you value them, you value their work. And none of us would be here if someone hadn't had those conversations with us. Bingo. Bingo, right? bingo, like, bongo. It also, this is actually an interesting thing that I'm just thinking of. Okay. Does this photographer have access to their raw files afterwards? Ooh. Have they even seen it? Do they know? Do they even know? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Because when I was first starting out, Taylor was the person I was second shooting with. So I just got my cards back so I could see my issues without being told. No one needed yeah. to tell me. I knew exactly where I had screwed up. And, and from week to week, I was also practicing often enough that I could remember, okay, last week, I really screwed up with the placement of putting the groom in front of the window yeah. and having him backlit. Why did I do that? Why, sh why didn't I have him facing the window? You know what I mean? Just yeah. something so simple. But I had access to those files. It's much harder when you have an, an associate photographer, a second photographer that doesn't get access to their files. Yeah. They're, only looking at them on the back of their screen. Um, I mean, also, like, mirrorless cameras are so funny in that you can literally see what you're getting now. Whereas, like, sorry to, like, I don't want to sound like I'm a thousand years old, but, like, <laughs> when we were shooting DSLRs, you would change the aperture and you wouldn't know what it would look like until you shot the frame. Yeah, and then you look at the back, you chimp at the back, and you're like, oh, mm. that's what that looks like. That's interesting. That's Neat. way too dark or yeah. you know the depth of field is not deep enough you and really that, and have to focus on that light meter on the bottom or the top right or whatever it was you actually um, have to know your settings yeah, yeah whereas now you just adjust things and it's going to give you an live automatic preview. preview of exactly what you're shooting yeah. so that's funny but um i i think the question of should i talk to them about it becomes even more imperative if they haven't seen these photos then yeah, yeah. i would say put together a gallery of some of their best and some of their worst and be like, I'd like to talk. Yeah. And just, and, and keep it light. Don't make it like a, a witch hunt. You don't want people to feel like they're on trial for anything. You want them to feel supported. And also if they were having a bad day, maybe they're just having an off day, you know, some yes. people are just, uh, they don't react well under pressure. Maybe you're an intimidating photographer and they're like, Oh, I'm really nervous to shoot uh, alongside mm -hmm. this person. And they just, fucked up it so. will also be so telling how they respond yeah true that's one of my favorite things when mm -hmm. i give people feedback is like if Watch you shut reaction. down yeah if you get defensive uh, how many times okay we've had this conversation because i love giving i love giving <laughs> feedback now because i've gotten like it, it's a it's a practice skill yeah but I, I would tell Tim, like, I don't mind if they cry. It doesn't bother me if they cry. And Tim's like, that's so aggressive. That's uh, I think because one time I said, I don't care that you're crying. Not about Tim, about another person that was yeah. crying. And I was like, it was like, and I don't care if you're crying. And it's not that I don't care that you're crying. It doesn't bother me if, if me giving you feedback invokes tears yeah. because I've been there. I've been the girl that cries when my boss gives me feedback and I'm like, oh, I cannot handle this right now. This yeah. is my last possible straw that I had left and now it's gone, <laughs> gone. Yeah. If, if their response is empathetic, yep. it's even sad, it's embarrassment, it's shame, those are all normal and yeah. I'm fine with that. They're human emotions. I'm completely fine with that. I have no problem with someone being like, oh, this is bad. Yeah. I messed up here. The one thing I will not tolerate, though, is defensiveness without acknowledgement. Yes. If there's an acknowledgement and a like, ooh, yeah, okay, I can see how you got there. I can see that you didn't like that. Um, and then they defend what they did and their choices, by all means, that's a conversation we can have. But if we're not even going to acknowledge and we're going to go slam into well, you did this and you didn't give me the opportunity yep. and this and this and somebody just starts like immediately going on the offensive and of like excuses. Oh, yeah. Fired. 
immediately. Immediately, immediately we're not working together anymore because yeah. that's something that we can't that we can't come back from and it's something you uh you're a bit more hardwired in terms of your personality Yeah, which is honestly really why a lot of the time i give people so many chances because i thankfully haven't had a lot of those experiences i've had a lot of people that that download that and then you know maybe their first response isn't my favorite yeah but the second one is hey i gave this some thought here's how i'm going to resolve this next time and i'm Mm -hmm. like good Let's go for that. Move forward. So I would keep an eye out for that because that one, the ego, she fragile. She a fragile, fragile lady. Mm -hmm. Um, Lindsay, great answers to these questions. Are we exceptional? Can I tell you one thing we did not do this episode? You tell me. We didn't roll the eight ball. Mm. And we usually do that at the beginning of every episode. And uh, Get it out. It's right there. Want to get it? Everything went wrong there. Do you have any questions for the eight ball? Um, do you? Not particularly. Okay. Hmm. Lunch? Should we have lunch? <gasps> it is almost lunchtime. Okay. okay. Should we go for lunch? Outlook? Not so good. Well. I don't know about that. <laughs> the eight ball's not always right, is it? <laughs> Clock. Uh, thank you so much for listening and watching everyone as you know we're available on all the platforms you listen to podcasts and if you want to watch the episode and uh, see how fun and cool and, and amazing our set looks check us out on YouTube all the links are below Lindsay great episode great talk see you next week thank you so much Tim this has been a blast peace peace